Hey guys, it's Jamie from Laser Gaming. In this video, we got some new Battlefield 1 info from people who were looking through the beta files on PC. This came out like yesterday, I believe, because people were still just digging through the files that they had. And sorry I didn't get it out to you yesterday, I've been super busy as I said, but I got some Battlefield 1 footage in the background, some of it is PlayStation Share, but the first clip and the last clip are both recorded with my Elgato, which I got on the last day of the beta. I got a new one, so that's working, but sadly the Battlefield 1 beta is over, and I am missing it already. If you want more videos on the beta, my opinions on it and stuff like that, just tell me down below in the comments. But in this video, we're going to be going through um, a leaked vehicles list and pretty much a leaked gadgets. There were a bunch of leaked assignments and stuff, but there's literally hundreds of them, and I feel like it's not really that big of a deal to go through all of them. They're just basic stuff like get 100 kills with this gun, 100 kills with this gun. Really basic stuff that we don't necessarily need to go through, but go through the vehicle list because it gives some interesting stuff and hints at things that we didn't see in the beta and some stuff that aren't even in the game files yet but it still hints at them. So we had the Mark V land ship considered the first tank in modern war, a tracked breakthrough tool, it comes fitted with a machine gun, so we already had that ship. We had the land ship, but then there's also a mortar land ship, it's equipped with a rear mounted mortar that can fire smoke or gas shells that make this version effective at long range, particularly against infantry. Sorry, it can fire smoke, fire, or gas shells. So, this one is better against infantry at longer range, but it's a mortar tank, which might make it a little annoying um, when compared to some of the other tanks. Um, we already know uh, what, well, I know because I looked at the gadgets list, there's going to be a mortar for the support class. We kind of did know that because we saw it in some of the trailers, but yeah, there's going to be a tank that also has a mortar as well. We have the light flanker tank. Um, I'm not going to go through the tanks that we already knew about, um, but if I do accidentally repeat one, forgive me, because I don't necessarily know the exact names of all the tanks. But we have the light flanker tank. This is different from the FT-17 tank. It's suited for close-range combat with high firepower and the ability to restore mobility fast and deploy anti-tank mines. Um, we have the light close support tank. Offensive and suited for close to medium range combat, this version has the ability to support friendly infantry as well as the ability to restore mobility fast. We have the heavy flamethrower tank. Now I remember seeing this on some of the YouTubers footage, but I think that might have been from Gamescom or some earlier play sessions as I didn't see it once in the beta when I was playing, but I could be wrong. So this is a rare version of this tank actually had two flamethrowers making it effective in close combat. This version can also deploy a defensive gas cloud and restore m mobility quick. Then we have the armored anti-aircraft truck. It's armed with anti-air pom-pom gun and defensive smoke screen capabilities. And this version is a threat to all things in the sky. Armored artillery truck, we already knew that. An armored mortar truck, equipped with a versatile mortar firing many types of shells. So it makes this version suitable for dealing with infantry from a distance. Some of the airplanes we had, really, we knew about pretty much all of them, except there's Tank Hunter Attack Plane, which I think we had engine-mounted cannon, high source of bombs, making it perfect for tank hunting. Um, there's the Firestorm Bomber, a version best suited for area denial work against infantry, delivering massive incendiary fragmentation payloads on the battlefield. So that one basically just shoots Firestorm bombs down on the enemy. Uh, the Barrage Bomber, equipped with a camera for spotting enemies on the ground and carrying both high explosive and demolition bombs. This is effective for supporting all ground forces. And then this is the most interesting one for me, uh, the Torpedo Bomber. Suited for attacking ships with torpedoes or other vehicles with demolition bombs. This version is speciali specialized for dealing with single armored targets, but a Torpedo Bomber. So it'll basically shoot out torpedoes that will hit the ground and then go and attack battleships, which is just super 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 cool and I can't wait to use this plane and use some of the uh, water vehicles on the um, ocean maps. They didn't actually list the water vehicles in this because the water map wasn't there so I'm assuming it wasn't even in the PC beta files but it is pretty freaking awesome that we get that. Now I'm gonna move on a bit to the gadgets for the various classes. So 
For the assault class, we have the anti-tank grenade, which we knew about, the dynamite, we have the anti-tank mine, we have the limpet mine, which is an explosive charge that can be attached to an object and it detonates after a few seconds. So I feel like this is a bit like the mines that we had. The M15 mines, I think, was from Battlefield 4 that you could throw onto vehicles and then, and then they would detonate. And we also have the AT rocket gun, which we knew about. For the medic class, we're getting grenade launchers. So we're getting frag, HE, and smoke grenade launchers which is pretty cool. I mean, I feel like it'll make the medic class a bit more viable. However, I hope we don't go into the same situation as we did in Battlefield 4, where everyone in the medic class just runs a grenade launcher and a med pack rather than the adrenaline syringe or defibrillator because in Battlefield 1, I probably only got revived five or six times in the eight hours I played in the beta. So there's already a really limited amount of people who are reviving people. And to reduce that even further by adding a grenade launcher is, I don't know if that's the best choice in my opinion. Um, obviously the only one we didn't have for the support class was the mortar, which has HE airburst and smoke mortars, or shells. And then the scout class has some interesting ones. So there's a spotting scope, which we knew about, flare gun, K bullets, and then the trench shield. A shield that can be deployed to snipe safely from a prone position. Now this is a bit interesting and honestly a little weird and concerning for me because you can deploy the shield. I don't know how invincible you'll be. Maybe there's a slight spot where they can hit you. Maybe they just can't get a headshot. I hope it's not too overpowered because one of my favorite things about this game is just counter sniping people across the map. And if there's people camping in the back of their spawn with a trench shield that's trying to go for super long range snipes, I feel like that could get a bit annoying. Hopefully it's not too powerful and maybe it just protects your legs or something and you can only get a headshot, which I'd be fine with. But if it protects the majority of your body, including the head, or if it just leaves your legs open so that the person cannot get a one-hit kill, that'd be very frustrating. And the helmet decoy, this is actually pretty cool. A helmet decoy that can be spotted as a sniper by enemy players and reveals the location of enemy players shooting at it. So it's basically just a helmet that'll sit there and it looks like a sniper. So people will shoot at it and when they shoot at it, it reveals their position to you which is pretty cool. I'm not sure how much it'll look like a sniper. Maybe we'll even have scope lint, but that is really interesting and pretty cool. Now, some of the other things that we got in here were just certain things, like there's a ton of skins in this game. Like there were like 100 plus skins listed. I'm obviously not going to list out all the skins that there were, but there were a ridiculous amount of skins in the uh, list, which makes me think that we might get sort of a crate system that gives us a camouflage because there seem to be a ton of camouflages in this game. I mean, it'll probably be a system similar to battle packs, but maybe they could implement a trading system. I mean, I don't think Battlefield will ever get that big into skins. It's just not really the nature of the game. They might try to, but I'm not necessarily sure it'll work. I just hope that they're not like paid supply drops because that would be pretty frustrating, but at the same time, it is really just cosmetic stuff, so it's not that big of a deal. So that's pretty much all the information that we got about the vehicles and the gadgets that come to the classes, but we also got some information about operations, game mode, possessions, game mode, and air superiority, which um, I believe also came, it came from a Reddit post. So basically, Conquest has 64 players, Team Deathmatch has 24 players, but Breakthrough slash Operations has 40 players, and then Possession, which Possession sort of seems like Hardpoint from Call of Duty, if you know what that is, or King of the Hill, that has 24 players, and Conquest Small has 40 players, so that is a bit larger, and we will be getting Conquest Small, which is pretty cool. I mean, Operations, there really won't be a winner or loser in this game. The game rates your attack and defense. So even if you don't reach the last section as attackers, the game will still award you for an effective attack. And this is really just for um, the XP that you'll get from the game mode. And it says that possession is basically like turning point from battlefront. Oh no, that's operations is basically like the mode turning point from Battlefront and possession is find messenger pigeons and send messages to your supporting artillery to take out the enemy. Piecing together the various info I think is how the game works. A pigeon spawns in the center of the map and the teams must capture it. Once captured the carrier pigeon will start to write a message 
if you stand still, you write faster, and the rest of the team must defend him from the enemy. It's a bit of a weird and interesting game of possession, seems like. You're really just fighting over a pigeon, which seems kind of funny, but it also seems cool at the same time. Um, there's also air superiority, which is now called airship raid and no other info on this other than the fact that you're just destroying airships. And lastly, I'm just gonna go through the nine maps that we have. In this game, I'm sort of just dropping a ton of info right now, just because I don't post videos often, and when I do, I just wanna give you as much information as possible. So we have Argon Forest, which was the one that sort of looked like um, the forest map of Force of Endor, something from Battlefront. It really looked a lot like that, which was pretty cool, obviously, without all the Star Wars stuff. But the textures and stuff looked really similar. I've shown you images of that before. We have Amiens. We have Chateau, which looks like it'll be the close quarters sort of locker map on this game because it's really just inside a building, which is pretty cool. We have St. Quentin Scar, which we got in the alpha. If you want to see gameplay that, go back to some of my alpha videos. That map was pretty cool and looked like it could be really awesome for modes like Rush because of its linear ba how linear based it was and really the hill on the map. You could push up the hill. It seemed pretty cool. Monte Grappa, Empire's Edge, which is the water and ocean map and the map that I am by far the most hyped for in this game. We got Suez, Sinai Desert, and the Foul Forest. So obviously, Sinai Desert was the map that we played on in the alpha. But other than that, there isn't really too much information that we have on this. I pretty much just dropped a ton of information in this video. If you did like this, don't forget to drop a like down below. Um, I'm not really gonna do it where Previously, I would have split this probably into two or three videos, each talking about the leaked gadgets, the leaked stuff. I don't really care about like getting money for YouTube and stuff because that really just earned me more money. I just wanted to do it so I could stay with consistent uploads. But at this point, I don't really have time to upload other than the weekend. So I'd rather just on the weekend do a huge information drop of pretty much all the info we've got from the past week. I don't really have time to do the Hardline or Battlefield 4 loadout videos. Um, maybe on a long weekend or over Thanksgiving break or something, I'll bring out some live videos and I might live stream again, but honestly guys, I just don't have a lot of time to do that stuff. I have been playing some competitive Call of Duty lately, just with my friends on free time, just because it's nice to just chill and do that with your friends on the weekend. So if you want to see that gameplay, I haven't really been posting on my COD channel. I mean, I upload a lot of the videos as unlisted to my main channel already, just because, just for proof that we won games. I mean, if you'd like to see those or something, or just ask, I can put out the unlisted link on Twitter if you guys want to just see those and follow me on Twitter. But I really just, feel bad that I'm not posting that much, but I mean, I have just a ridiculous amount of school work. And this is my junior year for school, so it's like my biggest year for high school, so that's why I haven't been uploading this much. But again, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. The ton of information dropped. Tell me what you guys think about the mortars, the grenade launchers, and stuff for the various classes. But again, that's what it is for you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.